this is a, a naked situation here, potentially, for the feds, because there is no explanation. I mean, how do you justify, okay, we're going to sell 20% of U.S. uranium production to Russia. That makes sense to everybody, right? No problem. I mean, as soon as you the words are out of your mouth, people are just staggered. What are you talking about? You know, or, or why not just... Uh, deed him 20% of all nuclear power plants in the U.S. or 20% of all nuclear weapons. I mean, it's that kind of staggering story. And it was out there, and then it just disappeared, in part probably because Hillary Clinton is running for president. Absolutely. And the last thing that she wants is more publicity about this. Hey, your State Department, Hillary was one of the nine federal agencies that had to okay this deal to sell this uranium company to Russia. And money was pouring in. And by the way, the money that poured into the Clinton Foundation from Canadian mining executives during this period that I mentioned, this fact was covered up by the Clinton Foundation. You didn't see on their books that these donations were coming in. And she had supposedly made a deal with Obama saying, look, uh, you know, we'll mind our P's and Q's on the Clinton Foundation while I'm secretary of state. You won't have anything to worry about vis-a-vis -vis conflict of interest. And of course, this was all before the whole Clinton Foundation story blew up in the press. But now we've got something much deeper that has to do with the Clinton Foundation. They hid those donations from the Canadian mining people. I mean, that's... What more do you uh, want here? Uh, there it is. Right. I mean, the scandal, it just is never ending scandal. And the plot thickens there with the Clintons, the Clinton Foundation. John Rappaport, no more fake news. Thank you so much. And obviously, we will stay tuned with more of your bombshell reporting. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Appreciate it. have the exclusive for which is a product called deep cleanse and why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula almost like the iodine crystals we have two unique products that nobody in the world has one of the most amazing ingredients in the world and it's called shilajit and it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago as a matter of fact this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite thousands of years ago up in the himalayan mountains and in tibet and we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple years but we couldn't get an organic form right i mean so I, let's explain i mean we, this stuff's so good we couldn't put it out for years right so i had to actually it's kind of like the iodine crystals finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available but in tibet and in nepal and in the himalayan mountains thousands of years ago they found they watched these monkeys and during the summer months the monkeys would go up into the mountains now you're being racist against monkeys and they would pick this black substance from the mountains and so uh in russia they actually it, it grows in russia in the mountains and in the himalayans and only in the summer and chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming oil out. is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and and during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap, it's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic 
athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given Shelajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I, and I, I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Former Congressman, thank you so much for taking time out to join us. Uh, you're welcome. It's good to be with you today, Alex. We've got a, about a three-second delay today, so I'm going to pretty much try to give you the floor, sir. Let's get into this. I mean, this is everything we've warned of. Obviously, we're not saying it's imminent tanks in the streets, but it's just part of this soft, creeping frog in the pot, sir. Yeah, this, this once again is uh, giving more authority to the president and taking it away from the Congress. This is sort of a traditional trend. It means that the Congress uh, is absent, uh, AWOL, because they don't want the responsibility. This uh, issue came up as we were talking about uh, the authority to go into Iraq and other places. And it was always, even when uh, we had a Republican president, Republican the Congress didn't want to go along with it. The Democrats didn't want to go along with it. They don't want to assume any responsibility, so they'd rather give up their prerogatives. It's one of the main major mysteries of our country why the founders worked so hard to allow these powers to be put into the hands of the body that's supposed to be closest to the people. And it, it hasn't been literally usurped and taken uh, so much as the Congress gives it up. But then the Congress, uh, you know, after a while, it becomes a... Uh, a whole, a whole long, almost a uh, policy statement, because presidents, you know, whether they have the authority or not, they they do a lot anyway. You know, they, they, we live in the age of executive orders, so this is very, very important because it's out in the open what they're doing. Like you say, Alex, they're not reporting it and letting the American people know. But you know, they they'll do pretty much what they want. Remember when we were op opposing the Congress voting on a authorizing bombing of Syria and the people didn't want it and, and uh, Obama backed off. Yet he went ahead and did the bombing anyway. So uh, it's out of control. It's this endorsement and this fanaticism of endorsing this concept that actually was born uh, with Woodrow Wilson. We're, we're responsible for making the world safe for democracy. Now that we are the sole superpower and we have the sole control of the uh, reserve currency of the world, and people do depend on us, at least for now, that we can get away with this. But it's very, very dangerous. That senator was very great on that statement. I wished he took that same non-interventionist policy with economic issues, but that's another story. But he is, was exactly right on that, and the Connecticut must uh, be uh, pretty good because the former senator there voted against uh, you know, the war going into Iraq, and he, I think he was the only senator that voted against it. Uh, Shafee. So this is uh, another another blatant attack, and we're in the, and then you mentioned it, Alex. This, this comes from the leader of the Republican Party, and he's supposed to be opposing giving power to a Democratic president. But you know what they're thinking about? They're thinking about how well, soon there's going to be a Republican president. And besides, I don't think whether you have the Republican president, at least tradition has it, or a Democratic president, they're all the same people. 
So whether uh, they give it to Obama for a year, uh, most people assume whether it's uh, Hillary or a Republican, they're all both are going to both sides will be authoritarian and they're going to make use of this. But it's very, very dangerous. It's an attack on liberty that should alert the American people. But unfortunately, we uh, in the liberty movement have a lot of work to do to wake up the American people. Dr. Paul, this, for those that have read history like yourself, is just very obvious. It's, it's confirmation of the march into uh, totalitarianism, just like we saw the spending authorization that they put through um, that gave the president a blank check. Th they're doing all of these unprecedented things now when there was months of debating, as you know, the big Iraq war resolution that you said was way too broad and, and opposed. And now they're just doing things that would, you know, turn heads if Putin did something like this or if the Chinese did something like this. Uh, I mean, why do you think they're suddenly doing this? And why would Mitch McConnell want to put into something uh, like this in place? And then why would the media not make a big deal out of it? Yes, and, and it wasn't up, uh, up front, you know. It was done on a Friday in the middle of a snowstorm, hoping that it wouldn't be covered, and it wasn't covered. And yet he felt compelled uh, to do this. So, yes, I think potentially there's always this uh, waking up the next morning and a major conflict going on. But uh, it's very suspicious that they're covering their bases because I think, you know, there is talk about expanding the war, uh, you know, uh, in, in Syria and, and, and even in Libya again. And, and everything is breaking down. Nothing worked in Iraq and nothing worked in Afghanistan. And there's a lot of people now, uh, you know, the Republicans aren't very good about a constitutional foreign policy. They want to grant this authority. And there's a lot of them that want boots on the ground. And this authority that we're talking about literally gives the president the power to put boots on the ground in any country or even in our own country under martial law. It doesn't limit it to time or space or anything at all. It's just an open-ended. And uh, this, this is the reason why it, it does uh, raise the question is, do, do we have we just uh, gone along with a, at least the presentation of what would be a military dictatorship? And uh, they may well have either plans or fears that uh, we're not all privy to. Of course, those of us who have been concerned are always looking for the expansion of presidential powers. And that's really the culprit. You mentioned the economic factors and how they get together and spend that money. And, you know, it's uh, just remember the pictures of Boehner and Pelosi's uh, arm in arm and passing these budget. And then our new speaker <laughs> went along and and passed that budget, which was atrocious budget. And yet it was leadership on both sides. And uh, everybody wants reform, uh, except uh, in the areas that they don't want reform. Because it, other than for Rand, I think he's the only one who's taken the position that we don't have to spend another trillion dollars on militarism. What we need is a common sense. Absolutely. You know, I've and, said, get, and get out of these hot spots and don't go aggravating people. Yes, sir, Dr. Paul. I've, I've supported your son, obviously, president for the last two years. And when he was still at number one six, seven months ago. Uh, and then now the media and all the manipulation has helped try to push him out of there. But, but separately... The, the thing I'm most proud of what he did, and, and, and I wish that he, he may be doing it, I don't see it in the media, is come back and say, you know, double down on what Trump said. Say, look, forget just not letting all Muslims in the country. We are going to end what's happening in Syria. Our government started it. Obama started it with the neocons and the rhinos and, and name the names of, of, of Graham uh, and, and the other senators like McCain and say, you helped fund al-Qaeda. You helped fund ISIS. That's what your son was saying boldly three years ago, then Cruz followed him and said, we're not Al-Qaeda's Air Force. He helped lead the military to say no, and General Dempsey, the chairman, to say no. That, that was an incredible Americana moment of stopping boots on the ground, toppling Assad, putting Al-Qaeda, ISIS in control. And then now we haven't heard as much about that. I think that's something that could bring your son right back to the front of the race if he comes out and says, look, I'm not the guy saying, you know, stop what's happening in Syria now. I'm the one that said three years ago, stop it, because that is so important. What do you say to that with election 2016 here, sir? 
Well, the whole thing is, is the American taxpayer and American people suffer from the consequences